Hello, hello guys, this is the Mr. Mirrors, and here we have episode 3 of the UMass Dynasty, which will be a game versus Indiana, and it will be our first home game, and here in the background, I have the top 25 polls in this franchise, and if you're wondering why there's teams like Oregon State and Northern Illinois in the top 25, the roster file I downloaded has the actual names and it has actual rankings from when I downloaded it, which was later on in the season. And so here in the background, just some recruiting, showing some recruits. And so if you guys watched the last episode, you guys saw I'm going to do play-by-play -play commentary. And also, tell me your response of what you guys think about the intro. And this video is I've been taking a lot of work. As this video right here took about almost five hours of editing and now I decided to do a commentary and so other than that what I was wondering before we start or actually never mind I'll get that later and so while the game's loading I'm just gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna go into play by play commentary or play by play commentary all right peace Hello guys, it is the Mr. Meow is Meowers, and welcome to another Meow Sports Network broadcast. As we broadcast, as we have here week two of U of the UMass season, as they versus the Indiana Hoosiers, and it's their first home game. And so there's a lot of excitement going through the crowd, and it's be their first home game this year and they are now a FBS team and so this shall be fun and so now we will have might see Mike Wexen come out to the field for second week as he did good as he did good last week in a loss versus UConn throwing for almost 300 yards and so here, just a pre-game festivity that we have the new men coming out of the tunnel, led by, I have no idea who led by right now. And so, Mike Wexen is there. And, and so, now as we get the pre-game festivities finished, we're going to show what happened last week. As there's 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and the U.S. Minutemen had a chance to win or tie it. But they threw an interception and Jones caught the intercepted ball. And UConn lost 10, I mean, UMass lost 10 to 7 in week 1. And so here's opening kickoff from Alan Williams because it brings it for game 18. For the first play of the game, we have a halfback draw as Wexen brings it to Cox, who goes for a good game of 3 as we'll be trying, as the men will be trying to establish them all game. So here on second down, Wexen drops back in the shotgun to pass it, and when he passes it, he finds Dion Walker for a good game of about 13. And so now Wexen jumping back under the center to pass it. It's a free play as a person on the sides, and he passes it to Mark, Mark and Michelle. And the Minutemen is the declined penalty as they got on first down anyway. And so now they drop back. So Mike Wexen is under the center. And they're going to give the ball to Michael Cox to run the ball. And he gets a good gain of five. As now he's second down on five. And so now Wexen's back in the shotgun. And play and do the hot route. And he drops back to pass, and he finds Dion Walker again for a good gain of about five or six yards, and he is down the ground injured. And here, as you can see, and so now next play, Wexen just hands out to Cox for a gain of one. They will be trying to get Cox established in the game. It's now second down. Wexen calls him a motion, and he drops back to pass. And he can't find anybody, and he gets sacked. Which will be third and fifth. Now it's third and fifteen. And as on replay, he just went right through the offensive line and sacked Wexen, who really wasn't moving. 
And as you see, Dion Walker's got his win knocked out. It's now third and 15, a long way to go. He passes it to Davis, who breaks, who turns up field, breaks tackle, and gets a first down. Which will be the And here's a replay as you see, he breaks tackle, gets past the chains, and then gets tackled. And so Wexon drops back and gets sacked instantly on the blitz. And so now it'll be second and 19. And so there's gonna. Wexon just gonna go under center and hand the ball off to Michael Cox, who gets a good gain of 10 yards. That's nice to see him good gains of that much. After we were trying to get him going, after a minute we were trying to get him going all game. And so here, third and nine, Wexon calls some hot routes. And he passes it to Rob Blanchflower. And it, it seemed pretty close to first down, but apparently it's fourth and inches, as you see. Wegson saw Blanchflower a little too late and threw him, and he had no chance to turn up field. And so now Co Coach Carter decides to go for a QB sneak on fourth and inches, and the nose tackle just breaks that play up instantly. And so now Indiana has the ball after a turnover in the first play. They passes it, they pass, they get a good passing play for about a gain of 18. And now it's second play. Kaufman is calling on an audible, and he hands it off to Houston, who goes nowhere, and in fact it's tackled for a loss of one. And the next play they pass it off to win uh, on an end round, and he gets no yards, and that will end the corner quarter here. It's a 0-0 defensive jump as uh, the end of the first quarter. And so now we will start the second quarter after they're done showing all the pre-game best game festivities and highlights. And so now third and eleven in the first play of the second quarter, and Coffin drops back and he throws deep and Jack is right there to intercept the ball. And now as you see the Indiana Team is pretty disappointed with themselves. But now the minute I see him replay, or you don't, and now the minute man will have the ball and the first play of the game. It puts that Blanche Flower in motion, and Wexon hands it off to Michael Cox, who gets held up at the line of scrimmage. And so now it will be Wexon and shotgun passing the ball. And he passes it down low to Todd J. Sharp for gain of 8. And so now it'll be 3rd and 2. And so now Wegson calling some hot routes. Will be under the center, will snap the ball. And he finds Blanchflower down there for a good gain of 5. And that will move the chains for a first down. And as you see here on the replay. And so now. Wags in on the shotgun and he will pass the ball and he will find nobody actually as that's almost an interception from Barnett but he drops the ball and even worse it's a holding call on Quentin Sales and so now it'll be first and twenty. Uh so the next play now Wegson's under center to throw the ball. And he will pass it to, and he will actually throw an interception, it was picked off by Williams, and now Indiana has great field position. In the first play after that, and they pass it to Hughes, who catches the ball for the game six. And so now third down three, the minute are trying to make a stop and hold him to a field goal, and great catch from the wide receiver, but Kaufman led him out of bounds, and they did his first down. So now the Indiana Hoosiers have to settle for a field goal, and this is a great defensive stand by the Minutemen's defense. As you see there, three plays for one yard, and the 37-yard field goal is good. And so now, first play back from the Minutemen drive, it's a play action after trying to get Cox involved all day, and Wegson finds Mark and Michelle down the field deep. And he is wide open, and nobody will catch him as he actually strolls into the end zone for an 83-yard touchdown. 
Put <laughs> legs into Mark and Michelle. And you see here, after a made X point, they're all celebrating. So now, Indiana, first play back after a long touchdown. Kaufman passes it to the fullback for a gain of five. Now, third down, Kaufman hands off to Houston. He gets tackled for a loss of five yards. And so now, with one minute and 41 seconds left, the Hoosers will punt the ball, and Allen Williams, our star returner, goes to, goes to return it. But he muffs the ball, and it will be in the end of all. And there's a flag, which is holding on Eric Harris. And they will, then the Hoosers will happily deny that penalty and take the ball back with a minute and 30 seconds left with good field position. So here's the first play of the Hoosers. Granted drive and he passes it to the corner and he gets broken up by a defender. Third, now it's third down. Coffin goes back to pass and he gets sacked. So now first play on the Minutemen's drive. They do not make the fumble this time. Weggs and finds Mark and Michelle for a good gain of 12 yards. As you see, Weggs is having a very pretty good day other than some one interception. And so now Wagsons under the center, clocks and hot routes. And now he hikes the ball, and he's looking for somebody to pass to, and he finds Mark and Michelle again. For a good game, though, about 15 yards. I think Mark and Michelle's having an even better day. And so now they do a halfback draw, which is a pretty risky play. And they get the first down. And so now Wagson drops back to pass it, and he passes it to Michael Cox. And so now 15 seconds left, the uh, Wegson gets sacked, and now 5 seconds left, they're trying to make any play. They pass it to Dion Walker, and he dies out of the house with 1 second left. And now the minimum will go for a long field goal, and it will be just short as we go into halftime with the Minutemen up 7-3. to three. As you see, Indiana's happy that they didn't let the Minutemen score. So now the first snap for the second half as Kaufman is handing it off to Houston for good game seven. So now it's third down, Kaufman's holding an audible because they run no huddle. And Kaufman goes for an option and he fumbles it, but Houston's there to recover it. But he, they still, it's a disaster for losers that's the last one. And they have to punt it back to the Minutemen, whose offense has been good today. So now first, first snap. It's called power up a run to the left for Michael Cox for a good game of six. Now on second down, Wegson passes it to Jose Colorado or something Colorado, I don't know what his first name is. For a good gain of about twenty one yards I believe to be exact. And then there it's passed by Wegson for a loss. And so now it's third down and eleven. Wexing calls some hot routes and he finds and he tries to pass to Michelle to Mark and Michelle. Who was open for a little bit, but all the routes went to the left and he saw him too late as a uh, whole herd defender stopped him. So now it's fourth down and eleven. And the minute are going for it, and he finds Mark and Michelle this time. The pass is complete for a great game, for a good game of about 15 yards. And now it's first and goal. Wegs enhanced off to Michael Cox, who gets a gain of one at the most. And it's now on second down. It will be the uh, on second down, the Minuteman go for a screenplay. And a play action play, which is a, actually a screen disguise. And Wegs and pass it to Michael Cox, who just could walk into the end zone. He was that wide open. So now the touchdown. And after a made extra point, it will be four. After extra point attempt, it will be 14 to three minute men. As you see right here, the wet wet pass to Cox for seven yards, seven play, four yard drive. It's so now with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Indiana is down by. 11 points and the first play back Coffin passes it and they get a first down and so now the next snap 
where Kaufman hands off to Hughes on the end ground, where he goes nowhere and gets tackled for a loss of three yards. Uh, as you see right here, the defense line just goes right through. And so now on the third down, Kaufman drops back, and he throws deep, and last time he's picked up. And this time he's picked off again by Burt, who goes for the return, breaks the tackle. And he fumbles the ball, and he's going to go back to Indiana, but UMass recovers. Now, first play back, Wexen tosses it to Fox, and so he goes to the left, and Indiana sniffs that out as it goes for a loss of three. And so now this play looks familiar, it's a play UMass lost off last match, well, last game, but he just dropped, throws, just throws low and passes it to Tall J Sharp for a gain of six. And that will lead to the end of the third quarter as UMass is up 14 to three. And Coach Carter is coming near to what could be his first possible win. As here they show some of the stuff that's happening in the game. And so now third down, first play back and first play back, fourth and first play first half of fourth quarter and Third down seven, Wags is hot routing, and he throws it to Mark and Michelle for a good about a gain of eight, and Jeff gets the first down, and that will move the chains, and so now, next snap after, they hand it to Michael Cox, who breaks, who just bounces off tackle, and goes away to his right, for a gain of three, so now it'll be third down ten, and they use the high low post again, and Wags in under center, drops back, and he looks for somebody and nobody's open and defense lineman goes right past his left guard and sacks Mike Wexen. So now it will be first playback for Indiana and Coffin drops back trying to find anybody and he gets sacked. As you can see Indiana defense is getting frustrated as they're doing their best out there. And the offense just cannot prove, cannot do anything. So now we third down. Indiana running no middle offense. Coffin run. Coffin calls an audible. And then he finds Lat Latimer for a gain of about 10. And it'll move the chains. And so now it's a first down. And Coffin drops back. And he looks for somebody to be open. And he passes it to Wilson. And finds a hole in the in the hole in defense. Now it's the next play, first down. And Coffin trying to find anybody. And he overshoots the receiver, which will make it second down. But now it's third and, now third and five. And Coffin's dropping back, looking for somebody to pass to. And Burt gets his second interception in the game in the end zone with a minute left in the first quarter, fourth quarter. And that will pretty much seal the game for UMass as Indiana do something. And so here is just a simple play to the fullback. But here is some things that we'd like to show you. Ball State beat Clemson 27-14. And uh, you can pause the stats. And so this play is just a fullback draw. And it's a first down which practically just seals the game. So here they just take a knee and let the rest of the time run out. Right here, that will end the game at the final score of 14 to three. And Coach Carter gets his first win at UMass. That's a nice home win, as you see here, the scoring thing. And you see Mike Wexen had a great game, the pause C here, and Cameron Kaufman had an okay game. And I see we tried to establish Michael Cox, but he only got for 40 yards at 14 rushes. And here, you see that Mark and Michelle had a big day. Dion Walker had a good day. Pretty much it was a good day all around. So that will advance the week. And so now, it's just my regular voice now. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And come back for week three when we verse number seven, when we go to San Jose, verse number 17, San Jose State. And that will be all. So I guess just keep track for next week.